Hello everybody. So today we're going to be adding a rechargeable battery mod to the GPI case. Uh, and we're also going to be utilizing the OEM barrel jack plug in order for us to charge this battery. So here's some uh, tools and supplies that you're going to need in order to make this modification. You're going to need a pair of strippers, wire strippers. Uh, these go down uh, anywhere from 20 to 30 gauge. Uh, you're going to need your pry tool, a uh, Phillips head screwdriver, some solder. Uh, I'm using 22 gauge, and this is 6040. A uh, TP4056 with a Protect circuit. Protect circuit. Uh, obviously, your battery. Uh, some silicone wires. We're going to be using three different colors. Uh, in this case, we're going to be using green, black, and red. Some uh, heat shrink tubing, and that's pretty much it. So, in order to get started, let's get this stuff out of the way here. You're going to take your G GPI case, remove your cartridge, and that you're going to remove your battery. Uh, door and then that'll reveal six screws so you have two four and six screws once you remove all those screws you're gonna go ahead and take your little pry tool as I stated in the previous video for the d-pad replacement you're gonna want to start at the top here because this is a little uh, easier to get at in terms of uh, opening it we're gonna start on this side. okay and then you just go around and just open it all up. Okay. So, again, you're going to have your ribbon cable. What we're going to do is we're just going to slide this down. And we're going to disconnect this ribbon cable. Uh, remove this uh, black part gently. Because if you pull too hard on it, you will, uh, you will end up taking it right off. So we're going to do this as gently as possible. Okay. Now we're going to remove that. So now what we have to do, we're going to uh, take our battery cartridge and we're going to have to modify it. So in this case, we're using a 4,000 milliamp battery. So obviously you can see it sort of fits. It does require a little bit of cutting here. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, first things first, you're going to want to remove the two tongs that are in here uh, for the battery. In order to do that, inside the back of the battery case, there's two little tabs. You press those in, and these tongs will pop right out. So th once that's done, we'll set that off to the side. And another thing you're going to have to remove are the two tongs that are on the front face of the, the G-Pi case. So these are actually soldered on. These are like the true pads that conduct everything to the case. Uh, so we're not going to be using these anymore. So you can either clip them or desolder them. Desoldering them is a little tricky. You need to like rock it while you're desoldering each one because there is three pins on here that you have to desolder. So the best bet is just to clip them as close as possible so there's nothing touching or anything like that. So once that's done, you're all good. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to uh, dremel out the top area of this case, okay? And what you're going to try and do is leave the battery uh, hook in there, so that way that battery uh, door can still clip in there very nicely. Um, if, if you happen to nick it, it's not the end of the world, you know, uh, the battery door will still sit in place. Uh, once we modify it. So with the power of the internet, we're going to voila it. So here's a case that's uh, been cut up. And as you can see, I did kind of cut a little bit close on the battery door latch. Again, it's not the end of the world. So I kind of cut just the, f the top half here so we can fit our battery inside. Again, this is only needed if you're going over like a 3,000 milliamp battery. If you're using a 2,300 or lower, uh, that should easily fit inside this uh, battery area. You just have to remove all the tongs. So in order for us to fit this in here, we're going to go ahead and put it in like this. And you're going to try and shove it 
up inside of the case and then we're gonna press it down a little bit okay so the battery door we're gonna take it and latch it back on and there you go now it's latched back on so now if you flip it back over you have your two wires here for the battery and your battery is going to be sitting right up against your uh, L and R button board that's what that is so uh, we're gonna go ahead and cut these wires uh, I'm not going to do that in the video I'm, I'm just trying to make this real short and simple we're gonna cut these and we're gonna add silicone wires onto it uh, you can add as really as much as you want but we're gonna extend those probably so from there probably another two millimeters maybe a little bit more onto there just so when we open up the case ever if we need to do a modification with the d-pad replace buttons whatnot uh, you can still get inside the case and work around it because if you solder directly onto the uh, the grounding the I'm sorry the charge circuit um, you're only gonna have so much room to play with so you're only gonna have a little bit so in terms of the charge circuit these usually come with a uh, micro USB connection now you can use that if you want but in this case like I said we're gonna be utilizing the uh, USB or I'm sorry the the barrel jack port on the G Pi case so what I've done is I've went ahead and removed the micro USB connector on the front there because we will not be needing it and all I did was just more or less take some side clippers and just clip it right off and it's not the end of the world if you pull the pad off because we're not going to be using that side really anything uh, what we are going to be using is the in negative in positive uh, the out positive B plus and B minus those are our, our uh, one two three four five uh, or I'm sorry four uh, points of circuitry so again, we're going to be using this. Now, I'm going to switch over to my pre-wired model just to make it easier on everyone. So here's a pre-wired model. So what we've done is we basically, um, I before I did any soldering, I went with a hot glue gun and I just kind of sealed it in place right above or I'm sorry, right behind the uh, volume reel, wheel, I believe this is. Or I'm sorry, the contrast wheel for the uh, the screen. So I put that right in between there because there's nothing really that's going to catch on that. This might be an issue, but we could just put some uh, some capped on tape over it so it doesn't uh, doesn't have an issue. But for the most part, it's pretty self-explanatory on how you guys wire this up. So we're going to take our positive in. And I took a red lead wire and we're going to put it onto this pad that's right up here. So what I'm talking about is this one right here. Let's get a little close up. So that pad right there is going to be your positive lead on your uh, in plus. Okay, so that's going to be in plus. Now in negative, that's going to be a black wire that I led down to this gold pad here. So now what you're gonna do is uh, you're gonna need to solder that pad a little bit because obviously it's copper. Copper doesn't really bond instantly with uh, solder. So you have to you know hold it on there and just kind of let it sit. And once the rosin starts flowing out of the uh, solder, it'll, uh, it'll start conducting onto the pad. So that's all you have to do with that and run that into the in negative okay so pretty simple there then what we did is we took a green wire and we wired it up to the pad on the left here again I'll give you guys a little close-up so it's gonna be this pad right here okay that's gonna be your charge pad and that's going to go to positive out on your T TP4056. Okay. And then after that, once you've extended your battery wires, as you see here, I've extended them, put some uh, heat shrink tubing on it. And what we did is we put the B negative 
and be positive. Pretty self-explanatory for a battery. Once that's done, you are completely set. Now, again, you don't have to put the charge circuit here. Uh, I know this track area uh, along the battery, you can place that inside there too. It's perfectly fine. You can literally place it in those three areas and that would be your best bet for um, what you would want it. You could even probably mount it up here too because there's a lot of space up in the top here. So um, really, if you find a good space that's not in the bat battery area, you're pretty much fine. So as long as it's not sitting in this area, unless you're cutting up your entire case. Now, uh, that's pretty much it for that. Uh, I know you guys probably wanted me to do some soldering and more hands-on, but I just wanted to make this as quick as possible. And I know I'm already talking your you guys ears off uh, about it, but it's pretty simple it's not all that hard as long as you have your soldering iron set to 400 degrees or less and you got some good solder then you should be perfectly fine um, one key thing for sure is the uh, silicone wires these wires are very heat resistant they hold up to solder uh, so like usually when you solder regular wires like the ones that are attached to the battery um, and you put your tip on it, the actual, um, I guess you could call it sheathing or casing of the wire will actually burn back. And that'll make it not work or conduct pretty well, I guess. So, um, whereas silicone wire, you can, you can literally keep your soldering iron on this stuff for a long time and uh, it will not do anything. The other benefit to this, as you can see, it is very, very flexible. Very flexible. Very, very nice material. So again, you could also crush these to an extent, obviously. Um, but since we got a case here, we can put this all back together and get it working. But I just wanted to show you guys how it looks when we charge it up here. So I have my barrel jack here. We're gonna place that inside here and that lets us know that it's charging, that little red light. Uh, I believe there is a green light when it is done. Maybe it's blue, I forget, on this unit uh, because I've, uh, this is my first time using these styles of uh, um, battery, battery modules, um, charge circuits. And uh, so again, just to re reiterate, um, once you have that charged, you should be able to power on your unit. This does not have an actual pie in it, but we're just gonna power it up to show you guys. And you guys probably can't see that, but there is a red light on there. As you can see, it's very faint red light because we don't have a lot of battery power, but that's pretty much it. So um, once you got that all done, you could just go ahead and button it back up in reverse. Uh, put your uh, LCD screen ribbon connector back on to the uh, the back end put your cartridge or uh, put all your six screws back in put your cartridge in boot it up and then you know let it charge for I'd say let it charge overnight and you should be good and uh, that'll give you plenty of playing power uh, to get you up and running and pretty much have you going for I want to say maybe four plus hours if not longer. Uh, I haven't actually tested out any of these yet. Uh, I just know that uh, like the 2000 milliamp hour, uh, that gets you around two to three hours depending on your gameplay. So obviously 4000 milliamp hour, that probably gives you another hour to two hours, I would say, I would say for sure. Um, but that's, that's pretty much it for this. So, and it's a very simple mod, very good upgrade in my opinion um, if you're not wanting to buy uh, just regular old rechargeable double A batteries uh, these are actually pretty old so um, but that's pretty much it guys if you got any questions just let me know I hope this helped you out and uh, keep on gaming